So after I posted my interview with Imam Tawhidi, a number of you sent me messages saying, we're glad you posted a video because we were worried that something had happened to you. Why would you think that something had happened to D. Wood? What could possibly happen to a man who spends half his time criticizing a fake prophet who ordered his followers to kill people who criticize him? They can't kill me. I drink too much coffee. I haven't been posting because I've been working on a few things. When you're posting videos every day, it takes up pretty much all of your time. So if you want to get some other things in motion, you have to take a little time off from recording and editing. I'll tell you about a couple of the things I've been putting together. First, I've been working on some new scripts for a new series. I haven't decided what to call the series yet, if you have any ideas, let me know in the comments. The working title is Muhammad Meets Everyone. The series will feature Muhammad having short discussions with various individuals. So the first episode will be Muhammad Meets Socrates. Muhammad will sit down with Socrates. Socrates will do what Socrates does best, namely expose a bunch of contradictions in Muhammad's claims. Muhammad will become enraged and he'll shout Allahu Akbar as he blows up Socrates. Most of the videos in this series will end with Muhammad blowing people up. Maybe we could call the series Blowing Up with Prophet Muhammad. I'd like to do one of these a week, forever, or for as long as people are still watching. I can have Muhammad meets Friedrich Nietzsche, Muhammad meets the Apostle Paul, Muhammad meets Joseph Smith, they can argue about who's the whitest. Muhammad meets Satan. Obviously, Muhammad would spend the entire conversation thinking that he's talking to the angel Gabriel. Things like that. We could even bring in other kinds of characters, Marvel characters, for instance. I would absolutely love to see Muhammad sit down with the Punisher for a discussion about his relationship with Aisha. That would be an opportunity for some genuine moral progress. So, I'm planning on recording the first batch of Muhammad's discussions next month. Watch out for those. I'm not sure they'll last on YouTube. If the videos get banned, I'll keep posting them on my Minds or BitChute channels. There's no stopping this crazy train, folks. Second, by popular demand, I've got merch now. People have been asking me for years about t-shirts and such. I finally sat down watched a bunch of tutorials, and put together some apologetics gear. I didn't just want to make products that advertise my channel. I wanted some items that help people spread information and start conversations. I'll be adding a bunch of designs. I have a few up now. For example, on the front of this t-shirt is a sheep. The sheep is a hero. He's been protecting women since AD 632. What in the world does this mean? Well, on the back, it's got the hadith about Aisha's sheep eating some verses of the Quran that women didn't like very much. Aisha had the only copy of these Quran verses. As soon as Muhammad died, Aisha's sheep conveniently ate the verses. They're no longer in the Quran. So, if you're standing in line at the store or the bank and you're wearing something like this, think about how many points are being made. If someone asks you about it, you could talk about the Quran verses, which are no longer in the Quran today, about breastfeeding adults. In the early Muslim community, the question was posed to Muhammad, what happens if my wife has to be around a grown man when I'm not around? How do I make sure she doesn't commit adultery? Allah responded, you have your wife breastfeed the man 10 times. That way, he'll be like her son, and there won't be any sexual attraction between them. If that sounds like the stupidest thing you've ever heard, that's exactly how it sounds to pretty much everyone. And that's why Aisha had her sheep eat this verse as soon as Muhammad died. So, you can wear this shirt. It's available in different colors and styles, and I'm pretty sure you'll end up having plenty of opportunities to share some information about Muhammad's revelations, about the Muslim claim that the Quran has never been changed, and so on. Maybe I should make the shirts, then make videos about how to use them in various situations and how to respond to questions that might come up. This could get 
interesting. We'll think about this a bit. I want to make an entire series of shirts on the scientific revolution, one of the least understood periods in human history. All of the major figures in the scientific revolution were Christians of one sort or another, Catholic, Protestant, or occasionally heretical, but they all believed in God and the Bible. Most people think that this is a sheer coincidence. These Christians just happened to be at the right time, in the right place, to figure out the universe. But if you check out their writings, their basic theological beliefs were essential to their scientific discoveries. So I'm putting together a series with the pioneers of the scientific revolution on the front and some interesting quotations from them on the back. I've got Copernicus and Isaac Newton shirts up now, and I'll be adding all of the other major figures in the near future. I'll be making shirts with some of my favorite Bible verses on them. I've got one so far with 1 Corinthians 16, 13, be on the alert, stand firm in the faith, act like men, be strong. Epic advice for our generation, more shirts with Bible verses on the way. And just for fun, for you fans of Islamicize Me, everyone seemed to love the magic backpack. I made a shirt where the backpack is on the back of the shirt, so it's like you're wearing the magic backpack. On the front, you can either get the backpack song, or you can get, if you don't believe me, just ask the magic backpack. I've never done this before, so I'm ordering samples of everything. If you order any of these, let me know here in the comments section if you see any problems so that I can make any necessary changes. Also, let me know what kinds of apologetics shirts you'd like to see and what reactions you get to them when you wear them. If you'd like to order anything, the link to my store is in the description box. More recently, I've been a volunteer cameraman for John McRae. John is going around the country interviewing scholars on the origins of Christianity. And it seems to me that there's still just an appalling lack of knowledge. And you need to disseminate this. You need to go back to a wider audience. John needed some help with recording. Why in the name of common sense would I go around recording John's interviews when I could be doing all kinds of other things? Easy. John has appeared in a number of my videos, any one of which could get his head chopped off. So if John needs a free cameraman for a project, he's got a free cameraman. Plus, I got to play the chess master, Tim McGrew, after that interview. Hit, hit the button. Start me off. I think we all know how that game turned out. So those are a few of the things that have been keeping me busy this month. The month has been a blur. To give you an idea, yesterday morning, John and I woke up after a few hours of sleep in Grand Rapids. We drove an hour and met with the McGrew family, possibly the smartest family on the planet, by the way. Everyone in that family is a genius. 
We had lunch, then we set up for recording in a church. John interviewed Tim. I played a little chess. Tim made some insanely intricate paper airplanes for our kids. Then John and I headed to the airport. I got back to my local airport a little after 10 p.m. I made it home around 11 p.m. I played video games with my oldest kids. We don't have a nurse for our disabled sons on weekends, so Marie was with them all day and the previous night. She needed to go to sleep, so I stayed up all night with Reed and Paley. Marie woke up around 7 this morning, then I went to sleep, but there was a family event around noon, so I woke up around 11 to take care of Reed and Paley while the family headed out. They're back now, so I'm recording this. After I edit and post this, I'm going to sleep. Tomorrow, I'll get back to posting videos regularly, except for next weekend when I'll be recording with John again. I want to go live a couple of times this week. This is the one year anniversary of Islamicize Me, so I'll see if Vocab and John are free some night this week. If so, maybe we'll play some bloopers or lost scenes. Also, for those of you who contributed to the fundraiser for Ministry to Muslims, Pastor George finally got the truck you all bought him. Again, that truck will be used to bring more Bibles, more tracts, more DVDs to more Muslims than any other truck in history. I'm going to see if we can get Pastor George on live sometime this week to talk about his work with Muslims. Also, I said that I'd be giving out some prizes to people who chipped in for the vehicle, so we can do that live as well. All right, get ready for the awesome new series next month. Check out the Acts 17 store, and I'll see you again tomorrow.